Okay, mate. I'm Alex. And I'm Gaston. Welcome to Power Mates. This is the place to learn and share about Fabric and Power Platform. If this is your first time here, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this channel with your friends and colleagues. So welcome again, Power Mates. Today, we are going to dive into a practical examples around Microsoft Fabric and Azure Databricks. Stay with us as we guide you through how to integrate them and what are those typical use cases and talk about configuration and step-by-step -step process. So let us our Microsoft Fabric friend Gaston, please enlighten us on this topic. Yeah, right on, Alex. Uh, as you, as we mentioned in our last episode, we go over a little bit of explanation why it's important to integrate and to enhance the frameworks coming from Azure Databricks and Microsoft Fabric. Now we are going to go over on a practical example, step-by-step -step process on what is the configuration that we need to put in place. So for that, let's head to my PC. In this case, let's start with our fabric environment and checking our current lake house structure. Remember that for that, I am opening my homepage on fabric and then heading to the Synapse Data Engineer workload. So in that workload, I am going to open, in this case, my lake house to check my structure. Remember that the lake house has a couple of sections, one for structured data under tables and the other one for unstructured data under files. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to my Azure portal here and check that I already have an Azure Databricks instance, in this case, with a premium workspace. Just a quick note here. Remember that only Databricks premium workspace support Microsoft Azure Active Directory, or Alex, should I say Entra? Yeah, you're right. Let's start this process setting up our Databricks workspace. So we need to launch the workspace back here in Databricks. Then I'm gonna open this window here where I am gonna check that I have my cluster over here. And this cluster, in this case, we need to set up an advanced option to enable the credential pass-through for user-level data access. That means that I can integrate and pass my credentials back from Databricks into OneLake. Another option for make it happen is via service principles. After we create the cluster, let's go and open a notebook connected to our new cluster. That's awesome, Gaston. Uh, but where one lake lands into the whole process? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. And, you know, let's try not to rush. We are going to get there. You know but me. You know let's me. Go, <laughs> let's go to my machine and open our fabric lake house again. So there's one thing that we need to integrate about Fabric and Databricks. If we check in the lake house under files, I'm going to check on the properties here. And let's bring this URL that is the ABFS path. So I need to copy this path. I need this path as part of my notebooks in Databricks. So going back to my Databricks instance, I'm going to open in in this case, in my recent, I'm opening the notebook that I already have. And in that notebook, as you can see, I am doing some loading on this data as an example. In this case, let's go cell by cell to understand this process. First of all, I am loading a public data set into a data frame. This is the line of, in my case, yellow taxi df that is the name that i assigned for my data frame so i'm loading a csv file from a public data set 
into a data frame. This is my first cell. Then in this example, after loading the data set into a data frame, I'm applying some filter on our data frame, some quick transformation and our data preparation. In this case, in the filter text taxi data frame, I am loading the data frame and I am adding some where clause saying that I only need the count of passengers where the count is equal four. So I am applying that filter and I'm displaying that into my data frame here. So that is the result of the filter that I just applied. And the last step in this process, as you can see, that's where we are landing data into one leg. This is the line that is pretty specific around this topic. I am creating this variable, the one leg path, and that is the URL that I just grabbed from the MyFabric lake house. So I am grabbing the properties from the file, and then I am writing the data frame in CSV file format into my one leg path. What is happening after I'm doing this and after I'm running the notebook, then heading back to my fabric here and I am saving this under files. And this is the file, the CSV file that I'm landing into my fabric lake house. So pretty much I'm landing the data into my file sections. Of course, if I want to make this as a table, I can load this as a table and I create a new table into my lake house. But this is pretty much how you can save data directly from Databricks into the Fabric lake house environment. Pretty much amazing, right? Now you can read and write data from Fabric leveraging Azure Databricks. Yeah, that, that, that's truly amazing, Gaston. All right, PowerMate, that wraps up today's episode. We hope you are as excited as we are about the potential on Azure Databricks, Microsoft Fabric, and Power Platform. Stay tuned because in our next episode, we will be moving forward with the topic on Power Automate and OpenAI. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and join us on this journey. As we always said, together, let's unlock the full potential on Power Platform and Microsoft Fabric. Yeah.